Hello, my name is Leo, and welcome back to uh, Alter Ego. Uh, in the last episode, we had Freddy with Jay and tried to help him, but I guess it wasn't meant to be. I don't think there's, I don't think there could have been a good ending to that story. Really? Well, I think, like I said in the last episode, I think it was like written from the perspective of the eighties, where you know there wasn't a lot of acceptance to homosexuality. So. Anyway, let's move on. Let's have to try to make it a bit more cheerful. I want to finish this. While sitting around the house with a girl friend one night, she says she wants to give you a manicure. Oh, okay. Um, yep, do it. Accept it. Do that. Letting your friend groom you puts her in a very romantic mood. After she finishes the job, you get cozy on the couch and have a hot and heavy time. Uh, unfortunately, the next time... Your friends see your polished nails and rag on you for days about it. Little do they know. What? That I had sex? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you're implying by that. How old am I? Am I, am I getting there? I'm 15. I'm almost 16. I am 15 going on 16. You are in a quiet, pensive mood, and your thoughts turn to the subject of religion. Your family's beliefs seem to be out of step with your own, as you wonder about the nature of your existence. Would they understand if you told them about the differences? I'm going to not confront them. Because that is how I deal with life's problems. By not confronting them. Your family would never have such a discussion with you. Religion is not an important thing. Blah, blah, blah. You just don't feel like bringing it up. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Fine. See if I care. <laughs> says the game. Yeah, man. You are annoyed because your dad doesn't seem to be paying attention to what you say these days. You would appreciate it if he would treat you more like a person. While you are trying to explain this to him, he begins to correct correcting your grammar. Fuck off, Dad. Angry. See, I can't believe it. You're doing it again. I admit you know Dad. This is a perfect example of trying to express yourself right now, and you're putting me down. I can leave it. Here we are. Oh my god, are you serious? You can't be angry and say that. I have to be assertive and say that. Fine. Whatever. Your dad is taken aback by your assertiveness and is forced to examine his own behavior. Woo! He realizes that he has been unfair on you and apologizes. The two of you gain mutual respect for one another. Ah, uh, I hear that. Let's, let's, go play, let's go play couch outside. Yay, jobs. Let's make some fucking money. I'm sorry, but, but you must have a job to do this vignette. Does that mean it's just... How do I get a job? Can I get a job? Oh, I think I can. Yes, 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 yes. I am old enough now. Uh, cook. Fast food restaurant. Drug store. Movie theater. Helper. Assistant at a law firm. Probably won't get that job. I don't want to work at McDonald's. I'll work in the drug store. All the places are now being checked. I'm sorry, you have all the qualifications, but this person has already been filled by someone else. They are a regular job officer, please try and get out. Fuck you. Does that actually progress time? I'm curious about that. I am now 16 years and 3 months old. So let's try again. I'm not working at McDonald's. Fuck that. I've never worked in a fast food restaurant. I never will. I've done retail. Retail was shitty. But I don't want, I don't want to be a cook, goddammit. I want to be a... Fuck it, let's try to be a... Let's try to be an assistant at a law firm. Good luck. You never know, it might work. Oh, I, have, I, I actually have all the qualifications. Really? Yeah. Alright, let's see if that progressed time or not. No, it didn't. But I wonder if, if I had have actually gotten the job, then it would have progressed time. Uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Give me 
a fucking job. Let's go to the movie theater. I don't wanna, I don't particularly want to be a fucking helpful. But I'll take I'll Yeah 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 okay. Alright, so now did that did that progress time? Huh? No. I'll just try to push that button one more time. Oh no, that's just if you want to quit. Alright, thank you, I want my job. Does that mean I have money now? Oh, I have a job. A real job. Oh, I got money, whoa! Sweet. Now I can do this vignette. Some of them are called vignettes. I would have called them scenarios, but whatever. In your own opinion, you have been doing a good job at work. Your boss, however, constantly complains about the pickiest things. He never tells you when you have done a good job. Oh, that sounds familiar. When you do something really wrong. When you do something wrong, he really lets you have it. Even when you foul up. Even when you foul up on something easily correctable. To make matters worse, most of the mistakes you make are his fault. Now he has called you into his office for a discussion. This usually means that you are going to get yelled at for something. Um, anxious, listen carefully, quietly rather. You become used to this kind of abuse, but you shouldn't have to. Uh, don't you know that if you listen to negative things about yourself long enough, you eventually begin to believe that you deserve them? I don't believe that. Get told bad things on YouTube all the time. That means shit, that shit. You notice someone stealing an extremely valuable, large amount of valuable property from work. Concern, tell the boss. Maybe the boss might get off my fucking back. Boss asks me to show no pictures or direct evidence. He tells me there's nothing I can do. This is one of those times when you think the whole world is completely insane. Oh, well. It's the last time I help you, boss. You and a group of your friends are getting together to go to a movie. Uh, I work at the movie center. Uh, your best friend has his uh, best friend and his date are picking you up from your house, and the three of you are meeting everyone else, including your own date at the theater. The doorbell rings, and you are greeted by a dark-haired beauty with sparkling eyes and a devastating figure. She smiles at you and tells you her name is Cheryl. Your friend is waiting in the car because he isn't feeling well. In the car and go to the movies. And you're just you and Cheryl make small talk. After all, your best friend isn't feeling up to par. You wouldn't want Cheryl to have a last time and resent him. Besides, your date seems to be so engrossed in the movie, she doesn't seem to mind either. Midway through the movie, your friend pulls you aside and talks. Ask if you wouldn't mind taking Cheryl home. Uh, he knows she is enjoying the movie and she is not, he is not feeling, he's feeling too ill to stay. Um, uh, I'm compassionate. I will take Cheryl home. What will he do? Take your date home first, well obviously. <laughs> With you and Cheryl alone in the car, Cheryl mentions what a great friend you must be and thanks you for being so considerate all the way around. She invites you inside. Oh! Oh, I should have gone the other way. Oh, no, I'll just, it's fine. I don't need it. Thanks, Cheryl, but, you know. You deserve a pat on the back for avoiding the obvious dilemma. Whether you know it or not, Cheryl had the hots for you. I knew it. When you get back home, your date is waiting for you by the door. She left her purse in the car and tracked her through her house without it. You bring her home and she invites you in. Let's take it from the top. Oh, okay, so we're gonna get we're gonna get Wumpy Pumpy. And then I can show it. God damn it. Okay, so now it's 16 years and 10 months. I'm gonna try going on a date and seeing if that progresses time. Alright. So am I. I'm 
God is home except you and Marianne. You are necking with her, oh God. Locked in a, a passionate horizontal embrace on the couch. Suddenly you hear a faint click. Someone's coming in. That's fine, just... Think you're sleeping. So we're in a horizontal position. Oh, we're lying down. Shit. So you and Marion were rehearsing scenes for school play. Okay, jump up quickly. Your hair looks like it was arranged with electric mister churning outward from your head at similarly seemingly impossible angles. Also you accidentally tucked your shirt into your sock. What? What? I accidentally tucked my shirt into my sock? My my sock? I think that maybe this is meant directed towards a woman and it's supposed to move my skirt into my sock because how the fuck do you tuck your shirt into your sock? How big is my shirt? Or how long are my socks? As it turns out, the noise is coming from outside. You can go back to what you were doing, but first fix your hair. Oh, sick. Woo! So, did that progress fine? It did not. No. Alright, well, let's continue. Hmm. Your parents have gone out for the night. You and your two friends are sitting around with nothing much to do. One of your friends asks, what kind of booze do your parents have in the house? Um, suggest something else to do. Fuck you dudes, you can't drink. My parents hooch. You know this would be a stupid thing to do, you will almost surely get caught, yeah. Intellectual uh, and thoughtless characteristics of Chris. Oh yeah. Oh. Have a good job. While you are shopping in the town one day, a woman who introduces herself as a photographer Tells you though that you are very handsome and that she might be able to get some modelling work for you. She gives you her card. Interesting. Ah. The woman tells you that she has just been given an assignment to shoot some models for a famous men's underwear manufacturer. Would you be willing to pose for some pictures? Oh, the pay is $500. Okay, done. Yes. Here we are. Good. All you have to do is take off all your clothes and have a seat over there. How do you feel? Uh, perfectly comfortable. <laughs> not a problem. I can do this. That kind of calmness is not your personality. As a result, you try to act calm and collected instead of being calm and collected. Uh, the posing doesn't work very well. The lady gives you $25 to take some... Fuck you! You said it was 500 bucks. Poor shit. Whatever. Is this gonna be sexually explicit? No. Uh, in group, what? Oh, sorry. A group of kids you hardly know have just made fun of you. Usually this might not bother you, but lately you have been feeling down in the dumps about a lot of things. Really? My life seems to be pretty good right now. Your physical appearance has been disappointing you. Your family has been giving you a hard time about almost everything. No one seems to be saying or doing anything positive towards you. You have a bad case of the blues. I'm... I'm going to be suicidal and I'm going to get drunk or stoned. This won't kill me. It won't. It'll be fine. It's the worst that could happen. You could die. This is... Oh, shit, 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 shit. I didn't know what the question was. What was the question? Go back. Can I go back? Ah! Uh, fuck! I don't know what the question was. Pressing, I pressed escape and it just it just quit out. Oh well. Um, and then the paper says, Why did young adults 20, 15 to 20 for acting modeling jobs ask for a rod? Alright, I'm interested, do it. You're really getting in on these jobs. Rob says, Very interested in you, gives you an appointment for an interview. When you arrive at the place where the interview is being held, you notice that it is a bare apartment with almost no furniture, just a mattress and an old desk with a phone in it. 
No, 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 stun, stun, stun. Really? Yeah. Ron is a large, muscular man whose face looks as though it was once severely blemished. He describes himself as a producer of adult films. It's not long before you discover that Rod is looking for people to act in pornographic movies. Uh, he says, just think all the sex you could ever dream of, kid. Uh, stay. <laughs> really? Yeah. We're doing this. Alright. You might have thought this would be fun, but it isn't. Oh, shit. When you don't perform as expected, Rod kicks you and punches you. You try to leave, he threatens you with violence. He also tells you that you don't deserve to be paid for what you are doing. Uh, you're lucky he's going to let you live and tell about it. Uh, at the end of the day, you go home. Uh, tell your mum and dad what happened. They are horrified and together you go to the police for the story. The police ask you where Rod had his operation set up. You return there, the armor is completely empty. Of course, the landlord has no idea where he went. So nothing happened. <laughs> Great. Alright, well, I'm going to save the game, and when we come back, we're going to play some more. How old are we now? We're getting there. 17 years old. We might just finish adult by the time we have to uh, uh, start playing uh, Phantom Pain. But for now, my name is Leo, and uh, we'll see you next time.